Okay. Yeah, cool. Well, we're ready to go. This is what we waited for all day, ladies and gentlemen, to see the final. And uh, probably uh, the punters pick uh, would be these two who have played the final, but uh, a lot of things could have changed along the way. But they've both played really well to be here. Uh, they're both very good friends. Uh, but I can assure you they both want the title. So uh, we're looking forward to a really good match here. That's awesome, John. It's uh, won the doubles as a, as a pair. It's excellent to see them both coming in here to play in the singles. It's actually very rare that they didn't run into, run into each other prior yeah. <laughs> to the final. That's right, That's, too. It's um, awesome, the fact that uh, it worked out this way. Absolutely. And uh, I have it on good authority. It's uh, Jasmine's birthday at midnight tonight. And I imagine there could be a few drinks consumed uh, after the uh, completion of this event. I'll, I'll remind him it's his shout at the bar. <laughs> I'm sure they'll be around by, supplied by the boys, whether they want to or not. <laughs> <laughs> now, just before we start, I'd just like to give a, a big shout out to uh, George Mariglis. George came over to play and uh, unfortunately, uh, it was more to actually check out the venue. He's actually opening a venue himself in Sydney. So he just wanted to check out the venue, see if there was uh, some things here he could incorporate into his new room. But um, he'd actually planned to just uh, come over, have a, have a few hits and go. And he actually had to give up uh, his quarterfinal berth um, to catch his plane. But uh, during the course of the day, he overheard a conversation uh, where a few of the lads were, uh, were talking to young Daniel Porter. Uh, regarding uh, buying himself a new queue of what to buy and how much to spend. And uh, George said, uh, look, I've got a Revo here. If you like it, you can have it. And uh, I thought that was just fantastic because uh, we all know that uh, they're not a cheap queue. We're talking 1,000 plus. And uh, Daniel Porter now has a quality queue to play with. <laughs> And uh, thank you very much, George. I mean, George saw his potential, and if he's going to give a cue to anyone, he'd give it to a youngster uh, that's up and coming. And uh, it was just a fabulous gesture, and I just wanted to recognise that uh, while we're on here tonight. That was awesome. I actually did hear that from Daniel a little, little bit earlier, but I didn't know who gave him the cue. Now we do. So uh, all you uh, Sydney siders, just make sure uh, you get down to George's room when he gets open. Looks okay. like to break. Yeah, we've had the lag. Jazzy's won the lag and uh, he's breaking uh, frame one. Big break, Jazzy. Yeah, he's potted one and he's qualified to continue. For those of you unaware, we're uh, playing a three point rule here where you must pot a ball uh, and have two, at least two balls uh, into the kitchen for it to be a legal break. And uh, as you can see, he's overqualified in this occasion. That's past the bulk for anyone else. Yeah. Bulk for uh, snooker terms and uh, kitchen for those of you that uh, that are lovers of, uh, of eight ball and nine, American eight ball and nine ball. Wow, look at that. Jasmine makes this look so easy, doesn't he? He just smooths them in. And when he's in rhythm, I'll tell you what, he's as pretty a player as I've ever seen. Little draw back off this shot, and he's got a nice shot in the five. Yeah. Put the six in the same pocket as the five. Seven in the corner, black in the other corner, and frame one. White ball probably back to where roughly where the seven is when he's finished. Ooh. That's oh, it did all right. go in. Oh, I put up a bit of a <laughs> fight that one. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh no, he's probably going to play the uh, white ball down the opposite side of the red ball. Uh, sorry, nine ball. Oh no, he did go that way. Just slightly under hit that one. Mm. Must have been a lot straighter than I thought. These are real testers, these ones. But, uh, you know, just hold your nerve, strike the ball in. That's it. Overcut it at best. Frame one by the numbers. Jazz and one, Mikey nil. Mikey to break. Mikey obviously sporting uh, an exchange uh, shirt from uh, Vegas. Those of you unaware, um, the Mighty Ducks, which is uh, Mikey's uh, Vegas League team, won the World Championships in Vegas last year. So um, a lot of exchanges of, uh, of shirts with the players while we're away. I'm sure Mr. Kwong's happy, to, if he's watching, to see his shirt still going around. That would be awesome. Never any issue with, uh, with with legal breaks for these guys. They just stroke the ball so nicely. I think uh, he's a bit unlucky there. And the two's gone to the rail, and he's got no uh, no attacking option here. This is with nine ball. It's so critical to be able to play really good safety in scenarios like this because with any error, and as you can see, open frames like this will disappear very quickly. So a nice safety shot here. I think he tried to get that behind the eight as well, but it's still okay. He's covered the line. Yeah, when you're playing a person of uh, Jasm's calibre, you don't want to give him a sniff. Give him a sniff and he'll pot you out. Well, he likes this line. He's going to attack it. Little bit of check to bring that back. That's oh, a fantastic that. shot. That is an amazing shot. He had, to he, go, actually, he had to go underneath the three because the three was covering the natural line. He checked that up to make sure he came back and made contact with the two. So that was a sensational shot. He might actually have a nice angle on that three. He's still to pot there. Yeah. Oh, he can pot it, but it's just uh, a bit awkward what he's going to... Trying to find his way through that traffic down there. Mm. Now it's the six rough. Yeah, he's made it really tough now. The four is on, but uh, to get back to the six to somewhere he can play a, uh, a decent safety shot, he might have enough angle to screw straight back and make and make contact with them. Ooh, he's didn't definitely quite. gone for it. Safety-wise, safety that's all right. Yeah, I know, but uh, I don't like his next shot. I think Mikey's going to put him under the hammer. Yeah. White will be behind the six there after this shot. Absolutely. Probably a little bit heavier than he wanted to because uh, these guys both jump so well that you want to try and cramp them up, take away the jump option. I don't think Jason, oh, he's going to jump it. There you go. Critical part of the modern game is the jump shot. Oh, you got to be kidding. And he's in off. No, no, he's just missed. So, yeah, that wasn't too far away from being an excellent shot. Well, the six out, though, unfortunately. Oh, wow. That's a rare miss. I think uh, it's been a very long day. Yeah, it's a good result. He's a bit fortunate to get away with that. But uh, certainly that was an opportunity missed there. I think Jazzy probably have a go at the double here. He does like this. It's not a bad angle. If he plays it soft enough, he can land the white ball. Oh, no, he's played a very clever safety here. 
If this white goes way. long enough, uh, not quite far enough, but uh, it's still an awkward shot. I thought he was lining it up to actually have a go at the double there because he had a bit of protection with the seven ball there, but he chose to play a safety shot and probably not quite as far as he would like to have had it. I think he's playing centre white, so he's probably gone for the pot there. Oh, yeah, he's caught it full. A little bit thick and uh, Jazz is back in now. And this really should be 2-0. Yeah, half, half a ball here and... Easy. Yeah, nice bit of running side to get around here. Stroke that beautifully. That perfect. Got the white ball on a string, Jezel. Yeah, that's a, that's the way you like to finish frames. Just close to the nine. Straight in the hole. That's 2-0. Two 2-0, nil. Two nil, Jasm. With him breaking as well. So that's a, that's what we call a mini break, I suppose. We all believe that uh, the break should be uh, an advantage to you. So uh, if you lose a frame there where you break it, uh, you make the break, then uh, we refer to it as a break of serve. And Jazz has got a chance now with his break to uh, jump away to 3-0 if, if he can run a rack here. That uh, certainly puts a little bit of pressure on Mikey. Mikey ran away with it a little bit with Justin earlier as well, and uh, Justin managed to claw his way back. Very difficult game to uh, be in front in in this game. Yeah, it was. One shot can change the whole thing, and here we go. This uh, Jazz has made a legal break, and now he's got no shot, so. <coughs> He'll have to, make, have to play a push out here. It's just a matter of where he positions it to try and uh, leave something a little bit awkward for Mikey, but something he's happy to play himself if he's put back in. Maybe pop the fire from the corner and bring the white ball over to the opposite rail. Well, not necessary to be that complex. Uh, usually they just roll the white to somewhere that's uh, a difficult spot. And where he's looking at now, he's trying to think, well, if I leave him over here, he can chip off the one and run back down the other end, but there's no serious risk of him uh, getting a really tough uh, counter he's safety gone. here. Yeah, he's got the push. That's a pretty good spot. This is roughly where I said to put well, but not quite. In hindsight, I suppose, the five's a good shot to get the six. A good shot to leave there. Oh, there's no need to change anything there. It's always better to control the white to where you want to be. And whenever you play off another ball, you can't control the pace quite so well. So that was a smart way to play the push. As you can see, Mikey's put him back in. And uh, wow. I think he's left. He's left about a half ball there, which is enough for probably uh, for Mikey to play a decent counter safety here. It's a nice shot to actually where he was trying there. He still knocked the four ball out and actually made the pot out possible if uh, Mikey doesn't make the safety. Yeah, it's a bit short, but he's left an awkward shot, particularly when you've got to pot the one and try and get back to the two ball. Absolutely. <coughs> Nothing easy about that. I know it's far fetched, but it looks like he's trying to go past behind the six. He ran the wide around behind the six, but he did miss the pot. And oh, got and he's a potted one anyway. He's got a result. He's knocked the five in and given himself a better angle to get back to the two. Mm. Well, sometimes those little rubs make the difference, and uh, that's uh, certainly a very, uh, very good result for Jasm there. So 
not often you play a false shot and get a reward like this. Yeah. Uh, he's avoided the, He's just made contact with the nine. That's still okay. There's three goes on the top pretty easy. Yep. Carry on for the four in there, in there near us. He's got a little bit straight here. He nice. would have liked some angle in this shot. It's not too bad. He should land just sort of past the blue dot here. Well, he found a bit, cheated a little bit to force his way out in the open, and that's not bad. But it's still a tough shot to get back to the six, so there's no luxury yet. We haven't no. got to the stage where we can say this is ABC. He's tried to force that a bit. Uh, force that, and, and he's missed off. it and scratched. So uh, Mike is going to get one back here. Yeah, Mike, you should just suck off that and land a bit, a bit before the... Uh, Six four. Uh, he's run down. He's probably overhit this. He will try to leave himself a nice angle. It's, it's probably good enough, but yeah, close uh, enough. He'd like to like to have left Stun. about a half ball angle. Just through with a bit of top right. No, he did. Went forward. Same as this one. A little bit of forward. No, just in and out. Okay. Oh, at least we've uh, we've got to keep in touch this way because that could have easily been three nil. But it would, you know, a bit of good fortune by Jasm to actually uh, to fluke that five and uh, and and keep the uh, keep the break alive. He did miss an awkward one. So we're back on serve. My, Mikey pots out here, and uh, we're two all and. Uh, the race goes on. Yeah, thanks, Adam. That's uh, really nice to hear. Get a little bit of feedback online here. It's nice to see there's some uh, interested parties out there. Obviously, the South Australians have known this tournament was, uh, was on and there was... Uh, Probably a number of players that would like to have competed, but uh, we all have other obligations. So uh, this field was still a pretty strong field, but uh, it's nice to know that they've taken an interest to to log in and uh, and watch this final. It's a pretty tough one ball here to uh, land on the next shot, but it's yeah. also exceptionally tough to play safety off of. So you've really got to try and pot and land. Yeah, degree of difficulty is one of those things you assess, and he's assessed that this is better off to go forward than backwards. Yeah, that is so a great right. shot. He kept attacking, and yeah. Mm. And That's he's got a result. Yeah, a little contact there. Didn't pot that as cleanly as he had liked, but uh, the two to three is a very tough line. The nine's in the way. Probably got to try and go off in and the out. Top rail. Yeah. And back down again. And back up the middle again and see what sort of result he gets here. That was the only real line he had. Mm. And it's not perfect, but I think uh, a nice sweet stroke over and back. The five's still awkward, so um, the five, six balls are uh, in a very difficult spot. He's just checking to see if the five can be on from this side. When I say this side, I'm saying the camera side. If he lands on the four ball and he can cannon that uh, six ball off the four, he'd be lovely. But, oh, he's uh, tried to make contact and he has to, but he's missed ooh. the ball. He made contact with the five, but it doesn't go yet. So this is still a real challenge uh, to complete this rack. Jazz is a specialist uh, at the, uh, the three rail shot, so he'll just stroke this in, come around three rails. Oh, no, it looks like he's going up. He's going downstairs to kind of... Uh, Pull out of there. Wow. He's brought it this way. Yeah, that's a bit of a surprise to me because normally he loves that uh, that three cushion, a little bit of running side. But that's actually exceptionally good where he's got that. If he just kicks off that nicely off the bottom rail, he should come up and kick the six ball. No, he's going to get. He's looking at 
Oh, he must have more fire now. Looking at a nine combo here. Oh, he oh, got he it too. Oh, my God. He's looking at a nine combo <laughs> and just banged it straight in. Never looked uh, like missing, did yeah. it? <laughs> wow, what a shot. Wow, I didn't even see that coming. I thought he was going to go for the four. That was amazing. What a shot. Yeah, Jazz has got a massive range, and uh, usually uh, for um, the mere mortal, that was a difficult uh, combo, but uh, Jazzy had one good look at it, he said, yeah, that's good enough, and bang, straight in the heart of the hole. one of the rare dry breaks you ever see from Jasm? Well, from these two t together, collectively, very rare. If the two ball passes the black or even can in the black. It yeah, or you can drop kick it off the black as well. There's a few options, but just getting through the hole to get a nice sweet shot at it helps. Yeah, he's played that into a good spot. Mm. If that two passes the black, he should run this rack. I think he's got to play cushion black and then in. Oh no, there was clearly enough room. Oh, he stroked that in. Camera angle made that look a lot harder than it was. Absolutely. Just needs to stay higher, this four ball now. Mm -hmm. Easy, bounce. he says. Here's After a nice the blue dot. Got two cushions, seal run past there. That's sweet. Probably oh, a little that bit. Is, that is sweet. A little bit long. Straight screw from here. Yeah. Bounce off the rail. Beautiful. Oh, that is lovely. Just a little bit of check side on that just to hold it up so it didn't run away too far. Yeah. That is perfect. The reason the, the reason he's in the final, isn't it? Yes, well these two guys have struck the ball well all weekend and uh, as Aaron was referring to earlier, they won the uh, the Scotch doubles uh, tournament, so they played well all weekend. You have a look like this. Two all. Oh, sorry, three, three two. two. Sorry, my mistake. Three two now, and then Mike is uh, Mike is break. So I've been advised it's uh, Jasm's birthday tomorrow morning, so I think I might have mentioned it earlier, but uh, he's looking forward to a decent celebration. I understand they've done a little bit of a deal uh, over the cash prize, but uh, I think they've left about 500 as an uh, incentive to win the match, and I think 500 is enough incentive. That, that is awesome. $500 to win a, to win a, game, a few games of eight ball is yeah. uh, good money for anyone. But to get here is worth way more than 500 bucks. Yeah, that's the difference between the prize money that they're playing for, though. Mm -hmm. It was a lot more. I think, uh, as I recall, it was 2500 to the winner and 1000 to the runner-up. And I think they've gone 2500 mm. So, yeah, Mike is uh, scratched here, and it's probably... Uh, one of the few errors that I've seen from him over the weekend. Um, I know he had a couple of scratches off his break against Justin in the semi as well, which uh, could have easily turned that match. So he should be looking at running this uh, down in between the three ball and the five ball. Oh, sorry, four ball, is it? Sorry. He's actually uh, he's got a little bit loose there. It's gone right behind the four. Yeah. Mm. Now, Jazz is very good at the kick shot, so... He'd be looking not just to hit this, he tries to kick it in. So two cushions, try and catch the uh, the two coming out. Yeah, he caught it coming out, but it's too full. Now Mike has got a clean chance here. This is a straight straight two with the three in play. Yeah. It might be straight enough for him to run straight past the three. We'll see what happens here. Yeah, he is running straight past the three according to his queuing action, but... Uh... Yep. 
it was almost he could have stunned it even and then played top through the three ball in the same pocket. He still would have landed nice. Same as this, done on the four ball, five ball straight in the gaps. Well, that was oh, just. No, he's a, gone round. It must have been just a little bit off angle there for him to go that way. Yeah. Definitely backwards on this one. Shot. That was perfect. That is nice. So keep a half ball angle so you can drift over to the black after this shot. Yeah, nine player, nine ball players as a rule, and these two guys I'd certainly categorise as nine ball players. Although they're, Mike is very skillful at the uh, English two shot game too, but usually the only straight ball they want to see is the nine. Very important to give yourself those angles to float back, you know, try and find the next one. And always nice to land on a nine ball where a nice easy shot and you don't yep. win off. Yep, nothing simple. Keep it as simple as you can coming home. Three all. So we've got a good match here. Now, I'm just having a look. Yeah, we've got a small crowd here. A few of the Sydney boys are still here. Um, Mikey's dad and brother, number one supporters uh, here. I refer to Anthony Cacciola, uh, Mikey's big brother. And, uh, yeah, he's... Uh, Without question, Mikey's number one supporter. But, uh, there's a there's a uh, a massive amount of South Australians that uh, have supported Mikey for a lot of years, brought him through the junior ranks, and uh, the thing that uh, we all love about Mikey he has not changed. As good as he's got, he's uh, never been an arrogant young man. Very respectful of his opponents uh, and people in general. So that's uh, credit to his mum and dad. Credit to him as well. well that's right. So, uh, highly respected in the game here in South Australia. And uh, for those of you around uh, around Australia and around uh, the world that know Mikey, um, everyone uh, has nothing but uh, good things to say about him. Absolutely. I had the uh, privilege of meeting Michael only about three years ago when I came back to April. And, uh, yeah, nothing bad to say about him ever since the day I met him three years ago. Yep. That's a good shot by Jazzy there. Break didn't allow him to continue, so uh, as uh, the good players do, when you can't uh, continue the break, you find a really good safety, and that is a good one. I think he might be able to get through there if he just uses his normal cue and just hits down on it a bit. He should be able to break through them, the seven and three ball and still hit the one. Yeah, I think he's got a jump. So he's got his jump cue out. Oh, he's got a jump cue, yeah. so it must be a bit closer than I thought. Yeah. Yeah, he tried to catch that full. Uh, he's caught off the side of it, and it still actually ended up pretty good. He did. That's uh, not a bad result. That's a good. Yeah, it's a pretty good result, though. I think it may be on. So, yeah, uh, but I, I think he'll play it a bit full, though, and knock the nine, and then uh, one ball up behind the seven and three, and leave the white behind the nine. No, he Ooh, had to go. He went for it. Wow. Yeah, Jay's is just a little bit loose. So, uh, it's been a long day, and. Uh, it's hard to maintain sort of uh, the quality of pull these guys have played through the day, but that was a little bit loose by Jazzy. Yeah, that, that's probably the shot I thought was coming last time. Opposite way around, of course. Yeah. But, um, oh, he's looking at playing the nine ball in the middle. The six ball is going to make the pocket a bit bigger. It is too. Wow, it'll be a good shot if he gets it. Ooh. Ooh, wow. And the one's oh, and going the one's in the going corner. Anyway. Oh, I tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what. Jazzy certainly had the run of the ball, so it's probably fortunate Mikey's still 3-3, considering the things that have gone well worked for Jazzy. Uh, wow. I can't believe that nine ball actually only hit the jaw. I tell you oh, what, yeah. As Aaron said, the six made the, uh, the the center pocket a very big pocket, and he hit the six, and the uh, nine still didn't go in. Oh. But he got the result of the one going at the other end. So yeah, this is not ideal either. He's got himself on the, 
on the thin side of his ball. It's probably best shot is just a deep screw. Or he might be able to just miss the nine on the way through and put the uh, put the five in the corner or the centre. No. He did try and uh, check that up a bit and straighten that, uh, that white ball line up, but he still caught the nine on the way through. Now he's still got a shot in the corner. It's a long one. Screw down the uh, left-hand side there as you're viewing it. Put the six in the opposite pocket to where the nine is. He could, he could go for the middle and actually go to the rail and actually play the six onto the nine. Tough, yeah, tough shot to land. All you've got to do is land yeah. on the other rail. At the worst, you're potting the six. Very tough with this angle into the centre to punch it in. It does look like he's, that's what he's looking at, though. He's going to try and run up and down. Oh, no, he ran through. Wow, yeah. that's an enormous shot. That and is an enormous runs, shot. If he Ooh. runs too far... Oh, he's straight again. Okay. Say, if you run too get far, ready, like get ready for a big screw back here. Absolutely. Yeah, that's nice. Nicely controlled too. And same shot now that he just played <laughs> shot before. Runs yeah. straight through it. I oh, know he's coming no, backwards. He's going back again. Oh yeah. He's feeling it now. No, oh, left-handed as well. <laughs> he's gone the Ronnie. He's put the Ronnie in. We've seen a little bit of this from Jazzy. I think he actually played a challenge match against someone the other day where he said, I'll play left-handed all, all the way through and gave them a start. Still got the cash. <laughs> it's not surprising. <coughs> um, pretty, um, pretty good player. Well, so, yeah, and, uh, like, you've got to consider that this is a guy that, um, yes, he can play traditional nine ball, but can be as flowery as anyone you've seen and uh, very inventive in his shot making and that five, that shot on the five ball gives you some idea of uh, of his cue power and his vision because uh, I think most people watching that would have thought there was probably ten other ways you could play it but it was probably more traditional than that and absolutely Adam that's uh, yeah they very much make it look easy don't they Definite fortune. That's One ball in nice the middle and the corner ball. And right on the two. Three's Magic gone a bit break. awkward. Three's gone awkward, so uh, he might have to play a plant. He can probably pot the two in the centre. It's run into the seven, and that give him a pretty good line at the three-six combo. We'll see what he does, but uh, that looks like the simplest way to, to uh, get around this... Uh, this dead three ball. If the two goes in the corner. Oh, it does go. Oh, look at that. The three. Even better. That's simpler. Back down the other corner, yeah. Beautiful. Well, uh, just like Adam said, <laughs> how easy do they make it look? And yes, definitely, Adam, they are world class. Or at least Mikey, I know, has played for Australia. In multiple Ooh. disciplines. He has in multiple disciplines. I think he managed to get, to get on that six from there. Perfect. Nice. Tiny hands. little, tiny little roll nice through. Nice little soft forward. hands. Strike that eight in. Gentlemen here, concessions on the nine. I'm an old school. I like to see them hit the back of the pocket, but <laughs> <laughs> these guys know each other well, and uh, they're happy to give those up. Oh, well, Mikey and Jasmine have just won the doubles together. Or, uh, yeah, it's very. It would be very unusual if uh, one thought the other was going to miss. Oh, 
Okay, we're back on serve. Pair of fours. <coughs> Very difficult for either of them to uh, to break away at the moment. And I suppose it's at yeah, this stage, uh, if there's any points going one way or the other, it would probably have to be to, in Mikey's favour because he hadn't had any real fortune, good fortune in this match. He had, uh, Jazzy's had a couple of gems work for him and uh, we're still for all. So sometimes those little breaks like that can, uh, can create a real big separation in the frame score. But uh, here we are uh, for all. Tasman's looking for a little safety shot here. He's Very the fine edge. That's the way he's running around the table. He might have caught this a bit thin and oh, gone. He scratched he's here. Enough. He scratched here. Um, wow. So, Mikey gets first chance here for a break of serve uh, against Jazzy for a change because uh, he's always been the one trying to play catch up. So, if he can get in front here. Um, get in front, and it's his break next. It's his break next. He could mm. actually get a two breaker. A two-frame break, rather. I oh, mind you, Jazz did get the 3-1 at one stage, so. Uh. Oh, look at that. Oh, Mikey, you still got to, even when they're easy, you, gotta, you still got to aim, champ. He took that one for granted. He did. Oh. That's very, uh, very lazy by Mikey and, and very rare. Oh, and here's Jasm has a sneaker. Or he's gone in off one or the other. No, he couldn't go in off past the black there, mate. Oh. But he, wow. he, has, he has left himself in a pretty bad position. <laughs> Fortunately, he's got enough room to get a, de a reasonable escape, but then you need to not just escape, you need to be able to find a safety shot from the escape. So making contact with the four won't be the issue. It's uh, what happens afterwards. Mm. Especially against a player like Mark. Oh, he's gone there. Oh. He, he's had a go. And I'll tell you what. <laughs> That wouldn't have been wow. an accident. That wouldn't have been an accident if he got that, because you can guarantee he lines that sort of stuff up. And I've seen him practice those sort of shots for ages and ages. And <coughs> he has an amazing repertoire. Should be potting the black here off this shot. Yeah, just skinny off this and find the black, and then uh, the four should still be in play. Nice draw back here up to the five ball. Yeah. Now a nice shot. Bring the white ball back past where it is now and up the table a little bit further. Take six in the corner. Just a nice angle there. A little bit of left hand side. Bring the white back up here. Yeah. That's good. And seven's very gettable. He doesn't have to overwork it. That's it. Just has to not surrender himself behind the nine ball, which is pretty yeah. tough from there with bottom left. Oh, he stroked that beautifully. Now it's a matter of where do you go? Do you go in the middle or do you come out the table a bit? No, Mikey, I think he usually prefers to go up the table. But hello, and as soon as I say that, what does he do? <laughs> he takes yeah. the middle. Just, he'll do anything <laughs> contradictory. <laughs> no, well done, Mikey. Nice and clean. Yeah, the, pocket, the middle pockets are pretty easy from that far away. It's when they're yeah. a bit closer to if the middle. Get in tight, if you can get in tight, yeah, if you get in tight to the dime ball like that, then they, you should never miss those. So, Mikey's hit the front for the first time. Now, I think they'll have a change in commentary because I reckon Sarvin's come back from dinner. He went and had a meal. Lovely spread. There's that one ball. Oh, oh yeah. That's, one ball, he's on it as well. That's turned out nicely. Good separation, balls all over the ground, no traffic. I mean, that's, this is the sort of break that nine ball players dream of. Get him open and um, really n none of the balls cramped up here. It's just a matter of joining the dots. Come out here to the blue dot for the three ball and you should be right.
Yeah, that's nice. He's come up to the right spot there. Maybe a tad straighter than he wanted. He's got to punch this in and out now to get uh, cross over to the five. So Can't see it bothering Mikey that much. No, not at all. There Probably. he goes. That's perfect. Perfect. Maybe a little bit short, but I can't see it bothering him. Well, these are nice. a bit softer. He loves these angles. This is the way the nine ball players like to play. Give me the half ball angle to move my white up the table. It's a very similar here, but he would have preferred a bit more angle on this. But oh no, that's uh, that's pretty good actually. Just get up near the centre pocket there. Yeah, he's made sure. Sometimes trying to get close to the centre pocket can find the centre pocket. So he just made sure he kept himself well clear of that. Ooh, oh, and that one did look. Jord. It did look a bit thick. On contact, it looked thick, and uh, sometimes you can get away with those. But uh, you can cheat the pockets a little bit. But that was uh, asking a bit much. That one from Mikey. And he just desperately would have loved to have run that rack to give him that two-frame separation. But, uh, and this is no easy finish here. When the balls are in the hole like this, uh, Aaron, it's so hard to manoeuvre the white. Sometimes screwing straight back is the best way. Yeah, Trying absolutely. to use the cushions can be difficult. Yeah, you should raise your backhand up just a hair and play through it. And Oops. don't go, in, and don't go in off. Oops. Oh, and he's scratched off it. Oh, dear. I think he did actually play three-quarter three, three quarter ball and uh, used, used the, the cushion there to get down there. Mm. And uh, as it's turned out, as I mentioned, they're hard to judge. Even a good player like Jasmine's got caught out there. So Mikey dodged a bullet there. Yeah, you know, he made a little error and got away with it. And he's, we do have that two-game separation now. So let's see how we go from here. Both the boys showing a little bit of fatigue. A couple of shots that... Uh, Earlier in the day, you would never have dreamed them, dreamed of them missing, or even positional shots. I think they just, uh, it's been a long day, and you got to hand it to them. What have we got now? Started playing at ten o'clock, so uh, we've had uh, had ten hours, and there haven't been a lot of breaks in between either. Uh, most of the matches have gone along quite smoothly, so. Not That's sure we can see the two from there. It does look like it's uh, it's hidden behind the four there, or snookered by the four. He might be able to flick it off the jaw, though. Jazzy's very, uh, as I mentioned, he's got good imagination with these shots, so he might be able to just... There we go. Inside the four, flicked it. Probably not uh, as high as he wanted, but it's still uh, a very gettable pot for the players of this calibre. I think he might go to safety here and just kick the four ball out and land the white ball behind the seven. That's a great shot by uh, Jasm, as predicted. Got no idea. That is a brilliant safety shot. And if you're going to play safety, this is, this is how you do it. You lock them up tight. I don't reckon he get an American Express card between that four ball and <laughs> white when he missed that. He did have, yeah, and a difficult one to get out of too. Those two cushions like that. The second cushion spreads so much wider than you think, so mm. you need a lot of time on these tables to be able to work out the best way to play that shot. And uh, I thought Mikey had uh, gave it a very an honest attempt. Oh, Jazzy's overplayed this one. It's straight on the six indeed. It's eight. not like him. He's normally very thoughtful about where to leave the white. And uh, I think they're just playing on remote because they are so tired. Because usually he'd make sure he had plenty of angle on this one to get back to the seven. Yeah, and it looks, like he, looks like he's just gone forward a bit there to take the long, long but easy shot on oh, the yeah. seven. No, he played a very clever shot there. He drop kicked that off the cushion to make an angle mm -hmm. and get down here. And this is as good as he could have played that. Should come back out to the blue dot again off here. Oh, 
Okay. Six nice five. We just got a quick uh, attempt, short break. Uh, what else has been going on around the world today? I noticed uh, for those of you that uh, follow college football, uh, Alabama beat Georgia in a comeback game to uh, maintain their uh, undefeated uh, record for the year and uh, stay seeded number one for the uh, college playoffs. Only four teams make that. Clemson did the similar thing. They came from behind to win their game to maintain a number two spot. George is probably unlucky in that loss is going to push them out. They had some chance of making the fourth spot. Uh, certainly a win on that in that uh, particular match would have got them there. Um, rugby, what are we at? Any rugby over the weekend? Some weird chat? Yeah, <laughs> yes, there was. was some rugby over the weekend. Uh, um, Barbarians, I believe. Is that right? Uh, Barbars played who? Can't remember. Uh, I think Argentina, actually. It was Argentina. I didn't watch the game. I was... Uh, I was having a chat to Roly about it. So, um, Barbars, for those of you that um, are unfamiliar with the game of uh, rugby union, is a uh, an association that uh, that plays international touring sides uh, in the UK, and it's usually the last game of a tour. Uh, the Barbar the Barbars or Barbarians. Hey, come on, brother. Uh, put together a compilation side uh, to play the uh, the touring team, and uh, they traditionally also have at least one uncapped player. So well, I don't, I'm unaware of the result of that game, but uh, yeah, just trying to keep yourself, keep the fans entertained while we wait for uh, the recommencement of play. And I think we're ready to go. Mikey to break. He leads six five. One of the nice rugby union results I've liked over the last fortnight, mate, was uh, Ireland beating New Zealand. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, I <laughs> For knew we get. I in knew. History in our country. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I think uh, Aaron's been waiting for an opportunity to uh, to bring that up. That's a very good segue, and it's something that I probably should never have initiated by talking rugby in the first place. But uh, yeah, that's exactly right. And I did watch the whole game, and uh, Ireland thoroughly deserved that win. Uh, and as a one-eyed all-black supporter and uh, a Kiwi passport holder, <laughs> um, I give them full credit. Yeah, yes, rare, rare win for us. So arguably, uh, although we don't have the points, um, is um, one of the best teams in the world at the moment. Well, there's certainly uh, what that has done has opened up, uh, I suppose, the betting for next year's World Cup. Uh, All Blacks always will go in favourite, but uh, they won't be as short of priced odds as, uh, as they would have been uh, probably three weeks ago. Oh, wow. Yeah, That's the short jump. That was a great <laughs> a shot. So I think, uh, I think Mikey threw down the gauntlet there and said, look, I dare you to make this short jump, and uh, guess what? <laughs> Jazzy uh, accepted the challenge and now he looks like he could easily run the rack here hmm. I thought he could have made that jump with his normal cue I don't think he needed his jump cue to play that but uh, he chose his jump cue and played no, it well with the short ones you always got to use the jump cue long ones you certainly can use your full cue but uh, with the short ones you should always use the uh, the short jump should always use the shorter cue well, okay. That is perfect. Well, I don't know about perfect. That's, uh, oh. if, he, if he just plays natural bottom right on that, he's off two rails and landing behind the five ball. Yeah, that's... Don't even uh, have to hit it hard. It's good enough, put it that way. He's played it well. I mean, I don't think I could make that, but I understand the shot. <laughs> it's just hard for me to play. But, uh, yeah, Jasmine, yeah, walk in the park. <laughs> I'm just trying to move here. Sorry. 
follow through this nicely and come back up the table again for Black yeah. in the other in the other pocket. Oh, he wobbled Ooh. that one. A little bit Didn't of check. A little bit of check might have got a small kick on that ball, but uh, it's pretty much straightforward now. That's the difference between Tom Chalk and using uh, the blue stuff. You don't get that uh, kick on the ball. 100% guaranteed no throw, Tom Chalk. Oh, this, uh, there's lots of uh, lots of marketing about chalk these days, which I have actually uh, no interest in. Uh, I believe the Tweetin and Master Chalks are quality chalks, and uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of marketing goes into selling chalk at 35 bucks a block, and I don't get any of it. <laughs> You'll never sell that to oh. me in a million years. Tom, oh, it's not worth that much. No, there's, uh, there's, a, there's a range of different chalks around, and uh, mm. they, they vary from uh, from a dollar a block to $35 a block, and uh, it's a bit like golf clubs. You can give some people the best golf clubs in the world, but it's not going to improve their golf. They're still going to be a 25 handicapper. <laughs> Same thing applies to chalk. If you're not good, <laughs> if, you can't go, if you can't run a rack using Tweetin or Master Chalk, it's, uh, any other chalk's not going to help you. Absolutely. <laughs> Unless you understand how when a ball hits an object, object ball and where that throw is. You know, we can, uh, can go into that forever, but uh, the more experienced people than I, uh, you and I, Aaron, uh, would suggest that there's not much in that. That's a perfect break because he's uh, in the open, shot of the two, all the balls nicely separated. That's a nice shot. Don't get cute. Just perfect. give yourself a line. Just float across between the four and five ball. Yeah, run through five here in the corner or the middle, depending on what you like. No, just float into the middle of these two here. That's perfect. Yeah, the perfect angle to do that. Now a little jack up stun. Natural jack up stun anyway. Probably a little bit hard, it would have been better, but uh, can't see it disadvantaging him from there. Just bounce off the rail and yeah, this come out nicely. It's like now, just a bit of freaking um, outside English and natural. Same as this, a bit of outside English and Land easy on the nine. And they've got so blase they're not even moving the. Uh, <laughs> mm. Wow, does anybody's game from here still in it? Oh, yes, yeah, they're so very six. close. Wow. Yeah. There's never been more than two frames separating them, so. Mike is. Uh, I suppose you could say it's still on break, on serve. Mikey breaks, runs this at seven all, and uh, the wacky race goes on. Okay, there's another beautiful break. Tell you what, earlier in the day, the way these guys are breaking, this, these frames would have been over in seconds. But it's getting late in the day now. It's been a long time, and uh, they're still doing a great job. But uh, you can understand why concentration is probably not as sharp now as it was earlier in the day. He should draw back from this rather than top like he just tried. A little well, bit of draw. Take the two in the other corner. Way easier he's got... Yeah. Well, the absolute it? worst, that's where he's going to land, yeah. That's the way he's going. That's perfect. Look at that. Right between the two balls, so he's not freaking Chinese snooker. That's good. Bit hard yeah. to land on the three ball, but um, could stun off the rail behind the six. 
Hitting it a lot harder though. Oh, he's played that perfectly here. Yeah. Got right mm. through that nicely. Mm. And the same as this, just a little bit of freaking outside English. Oh no, he's going the other way by the looks of him. He's going inside, trying wow. to go underneath the five, yeah. Wow. Probably it's didn't catch that as sweet as he'd like to because... Uh, I don't want to Yeah, it was, you could definitely go the other way, but he, I thought he could probably, uh, in his defence, he was thinking to get a better, uh, a better angle by going that way, and as it turns out, uh, it's worked against him. Yeah, the other way would have been, um, and then he had a natural shot to play bottom left, play off the two rails and come directly up behind the six, sort of past where the three is now, from where the three was. It seemed like a more natural mm. path, but uh, mm. he, he liked uh, to go underneath and probably just pulled up a little short. Yeah, and that's brought about, brought about the miss in that uh, on the five. Jazzy's cut this in. Where's uh -oh. the white ball going? He's scratching. Yeah. Wow. That's only happened because he caught it fat. Uh, he did catch that very thick. And that's um, changed the line. He was looking to come uh, thinner than that and go back, miss the nine altogether and come back round with the six in the same hole to where the eight is. I'm bewildered why he doesn't play the six straight onto nine off that shot. And no, almost looked dead straight. No, these guys would never, ever do that in a million years. When there's an easy run out like that, there's, with separation between the object ball and the nine, that wide, that is the hardest shot on the planet. Hmm. I agree, but it looked like he looked at it for a sec. <laughs> yeah, you looked like he looked like it. <laughs> <laughs> he, oh, he, his lift is a bit thin too. He'll be fine with this. Even if he puts a hair right on it, he should land up sort of straight towards the middle. Yeah. yeah. That's still good enough for this standard, it's no problem. He's not missing that. That's exactly the same as all the other ones he's potted <laughs> yeah. in the other pocket. He just seems <laughs> to like that, um, like yeah. you said once before, that particular half ball <laughs> is just a nice, easy shot, and it's really a preferred pot, isn't it? Well, he seems to be. I don't think he mean, meant to get there, but he does seem to uh, enjoy them. He's certainly not going to miss them. Quite often I've seen him pot the nine ball, and whenever he lands on it, it seems to be that half ball. <coughs> Do excuse John for a second, he's just having a drink. <laughs> yeah, sorry, excuse me, I need a bit of lubrication there. Okay, pair of sevens. Jazzy to break, and we're back on serve. I reckon the person on seven is going to win. One of these sevens is going to go all the way. <laughs> oh, and he's part of the wing ball and the... Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Very close. Nearly said white ball then. Uh, he's unlucky. He's, he hasn't got much of a shot at the two ball here. He can make contact, but... Uh, what he's going to do, I'm not sure. I mean, early in the day, I think it would have been a lot easier to predict uh, the shot making of these two. But I think as we've got to the, uh, the latter stages... Um, both of them probably being uh, taking on more aggressive options than we would have thought. Well, he's got a good shot to pot, and he's still going to get a safety if he lands the white ball towards the top rail. Towards the top pocket, I mean. Oh, and he's jagged the result there. Yeah, he might lift the teeth, might still be on here. It's on for at least a safety, yeah. No, he can only hit one side of it, so you could probably try and pot it if he can do that. Oh, he's decided to actually go back off. That's fine, that's a very good mm -hmm. safety shot. So Jazzy's looking at a two-cushion escape here. Oh, that's not far off from potting it either. When he's got a result. He's got, yeah. He's Ooh, done all right. Out of, he's done all right out of most of these. This might can just be on. Can he, can he see it, John? Yeah. I think he can just kick it in if he has to with a little bit of right-hand side. Sorry, I'm standing right-hand side of the table. Where I can't see it. Oh, he's got it. Yeah, he has. Actually, it mm. looked like he played that naturally, so... Mm. White just went in and out, so that's a good shot. Yeah, five ball is still a tough shot, though. He's still going to play five ball down the end. Great shot. Yeah, he got four to break the five, I think. 
If he lands on the uh, top rail and an eight to five, five straight down the end of the table, he's right. Probably come off a bit square there okay. rather than where yeah, he wanted. Yeah, it was interesting. Yeah, I thought he had enough barge in there. And because it was so thin, it was hard to hold. I thought he might have tried to make contact there, but this mm. is still okay. One good pot. He's caught that thick. Well, and he's got a result as well. Well, it's safe. That's a good result, yeah. Oh, a couple uh, of the times now, Mike, he's hit that shot uh, and just been, been catching it a bit thick each time. I think uh, Jasm can pot it, but it seems like he just went straight for the pot then, but um, it is definitely a tough cut. Oh, no, uh, he's, he's gone, gone safety. He's gone the safety option, which is uh, probably a smart option there. Yeah. Even if you don't land behind the nine, it's still really tough pot from there. And yep. tough and tough to get another safety. Yeah. He could go for the five ball behind the black and land the white ball behind the nine ball. He's more likely to go the other way actually. He's skinny off off the five on the left hand side, push the five down behind the nine and run the white away. Yeah, that was the that was the easier shot and probably the simpler. Yeah, definitely. Simpler shot of the two. Bit harder to see from this side of the table. That was awesome. Good call, Joe. Now, I think uh, Jazzy is actually sneaking here. He might just be able to see the very finest edge. And the way he's lining up, I think he can. But it's still very tough. Because I know he looked across initially to play off, off the side rail into it, but he's decided, no, I can, uh, I can hit enough of this. And if he hits enough of it, he can pot it. Just the force of the shot will tell you whether you can or can't. Oh, that's that's a huge shot. That's a huge shot. And unfortunately, he's got no result. That ball swerved a bit coming down, but that can happen after it's made contact with a ball, one cushion, gone to one end, hit another cushion. You're always going to get a little bit of reaction on the white ball. Hey guys, so I'm joining JB in commentary. Uh, thanks, Sarvan. Uh, so do you Eric, think he can get through to this? Or? It's definitely a good jump shot here. And it's good effort. He's got a result though. He might have just left some sticking out. So uh, yeah. I, think, I think we're at this stage of this, with this frame, there's not a lot of safety involved now. It's very hard to find a good safety shot. Michael will definitely have a go at this one. Yeah. I think you can uh, play two rails back to where the white is now and hold for the eight. Same pocket? Yeah. Oh, he's gone all the way around. Yeah, I think he, he, he felt he felt felt um, more confident that he'd do go, go all the way. Yeah, fair so enough. So, yeah, he's done well here. <laughs> oh, that's a good pot. Yeah, that's no, good. So 8-7 to Mikey. 8-7 to Mikey and his break. So uh, as we were referring yeah. uh, to earlier, Sarvan, uh, we call that a break of serve. And uh, Mikey now has an opportunity to get a two-frame separation again. Absolutely. And the Just way these guys going. The way these guys have been breaking. Uh, yeah, it's a big they chance. Both, they've both broken beautifully. Not yeah, only absolutely. not only got balls and, uh, and qualified under the three-point rule, but... Uh, got great separation with all the balls so there's nothing jammed up anywhere everything seems to be nice and clear yeah so, well you just need that first shot to be uh, accessible and uh, they run racks for sure so what do you uh, think of the final so far i was just mentioning earlier Sarvan, that uh, i think the boys are a little bit tired they're not yeah. as sharp as they were early in the day yeah we're seeing the odds uh probably misjudgment and and uh a missed shot Yep. Uh, due to, I think, a little bit of that fatigue. Absolutely. We both know just how exceptional these two players are, but they have, haven't produced uh, 
as good a quality. Oh, hey, look, they played really well. I don't want to take any detract yeah. out from that. But we know that the standard they can produce is better than we've seen so far. For sure. And, and I, there's I, probably um, a few factors that contribute to that. Not only making it deep in the doubles and winning that, but, yep. um, you know, there's three long days of, of pool. And yep. they've obviously um, they've looked after each other, uh, like, themselves pretty well with, like, not drinking too much and stuff like that. But there's still long days, limited hours of sleep. Then you combine the fact that they were doubles partners. They're playing each other in the final. You know, it's, and they're it's great hard to mates. play. Yeah, they are very good mates. So, in, yeah. yeah. And Makes it is it hard to motivate oh. yourself against someone who's good friends. And For sure. I know Jazzy in particular suffers from that. And, yeah. uh, he spoke to me earlier in the day about how difficult he finds it, you know, playing someone who's a good mate. And uh, yeah, I said, at the end of the day, you just play for your own personal pride. For you sure. don't need to be uh, feel you know sorry for your opponent because he's your mate. You play the best you can. Um, it's a nice, confident pot. That's a very good pot, actually. Nice little stun run to get through there. Yeah, you just want to make sure you uh, get onto the right hand side of the seven, so you can just run through. He's leave a nice angle on the eight. Well, it's very straight here, but he can play a little drag shot and still leave a nice shot on the uh, on the eight here. Yeah. I think he'll uh, run through just a little um, and then leave an angle on the eight to go two rails. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Well, he's getting into a bit of a rhythm now. It's a nice shot. Yeah. Just makes yeah, the it way look effortless, doesn't he? He's back on this nine ball that Aaron referred to that he just loves, seems to love that angle and uh, he can pot him blindfolded, I think. <laughs> yeah. It's a 9-7. <laughs> just about to have a five minute break. No, so you're going to take a five minute break. So uh, the boys, uh, it's now 9-7 to, uh, to Mikey and we'll have a five minute break. Be right back.
Alright guys, we're back from our break. Uh, it looks like it was a legal break, a ball down, and he's on the one ball. So, a good opportunity here. You can uh, cut this one in, go across and back off the two side rails, and probably just higher than where the white is now to hold yep. for the two. That's right. That, uh, that's all these players ask for. Just give me a clean shot. And, uh, and some open space, and they'll, uh, they'll join the dots. A little bit underplayed there, but... Oh, the whites, maybe... Just enough. Just, just enough. Yeah. I think you can go two rails here between the four and the eight and between the seven and the nine and come down for the three. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good line. He's going wide to go between oh, the four and the, three, the seven. He's done the three cushions, yeah. Oh, he's played it nice. So he's played that perfectly. He'd love to have just gone a little bit further. Yeah, it was nice to have a half ball off this one. Just float up the table with yeah. the touch of side to get on that four. But now he's just got a little, a little bit more, a little bit I think bit you can just punch it with right-hand side off the rail. Yeah, he's got a nice, yeah, nice, right nice action off that. That's perfect. Probably a little, yeah. He can still stun the, over to the six, I think. Just got a little bit of, pinch a little bit of angle on this. Let's play it nice. Yeah, that's good. So you want to try and get a little bit further to the left of where the white is now, because you don't want the seven, the white to be going towards the nine. That's correct. So land low on this. It's a nice shot. Ooh. Yeah, that's straight, little, straight enough, I think. Straight enough, yeah, I think so. Because the black goes in the centre, yeah. so... Worst case, he can top through if he needs to and That's come what back he's up. doing, I think. He's going to come right through. He cues it so nicely, doesn't he? Yeah, probably didn't catch out as sweet as he wanted to. Usually True. he'd want to be just slightly above that, but that's uh, that's good enough. So are you going uh, just one rail up and down, or are you going two rails? Traditionally just one. Uh-oh. Oh, Jazzy went to go two, and he didn't get enough bite on that one. Yeah. He tried to get a little bit of uh, bit of running off that top cushion to go uh, into the side cushion and come back out again. He didn't yeah. get enough on it. Key, uh, key shot coming up here, because... This yeah, is a this big difference. And this is, this is the difference between not getting through that seven ball enough so he's high on the eight. Yeah. You know, just, uh, it looked like a simple enough shot and, and uh, you know, under normal circumstances you would have said he got perfect on this nine. But, Absolutely. Uh, now this is a really challenging shot in the middle. This is no luxury. He's played it really well. Yeah, he has played it well. Very, Very confidently. Yeah very important you play to that outside jaw because uh, you hit the early jaw there's no chance it's going to go but you do get assistance off that outside jaw and uh, sometimes it can it can loosen your arm now because you just feel like you got out of jail there you, I mean you've played that average shot on the seven and a massive recovery shot yep that could have easily been another flip to, to Mikey and then it would have made a three game separation so yeah. you need to stay in touch with Mikey because uh, once he once Mikey gets a run on he can run right over the top of you yeah true So another opportunity for Mikey to maintain the two-frame buffer. 
Yes, this is break, and the way they guys have been breaking, it's just been uh, exceptional. And the Magi Rack certainly does help because they can control. They know they're going to get the wing ball, um, and it's just a matter of keeping the wide in play and uh, hope, hopefully finding somewhere near the one. There's never any any danger of them uh, not making the three point rule because they get multiple balls through the uh, through the kitchen. Yeah. So another legal break and. The white's just being kissed away yeah, from the rail. Just enough to have a, have a shot at the one. Because <laughs> that could have been right on the rail. That would have been hard. There's still no luxury from where he is. And, uh, and hard, hard to tell whether the two goes past the three ball there in the yeah, corner. Yeah, it looks tough. I think it goes, but maybe into half a pocket. In the, yeah, into half. And uh, actually, one thing I've noticed, and particularly with Jazzy, that uh, he's very clever at cheating the pockets in these scenarios. Yeah, but, he uh, is. Mikey's also very good at it, so and we'll just see yeah. how he gets, how he plays this. But I think can he play with bottom and stun off the side rail? Yes, he's played that oh, over there the nicely. Rail, yeah. yeah. So he's still a little bit hampered, though. I think with the seven, he might be able to shoot around it. Oh no, he's definitely over the top, and that makes this shot compli complicates this shot uh, dramatically. Oh, he's missed it. Yep. He might it's get amazing, away with it, it though. He has got away with it. <laughs> But yeah, it's amazing. Once you've got a cue over the top of the ball, you're not in your natural uh, cueing stance. Yeah, it just it makes does, it much uh, harder. It complicates the shot quite dramatically. Do you think you can see enough of this two to play the two as a bank down table and get the white behind the three? Yeah, you'll just screw to the side rail and come try and get the white back under the three again because he's hitting enough of the two to drive it along past the black. And yeah, that's that's nice. It's nice feel. Nice. You got to have yeah. You got to have nice soft hands and really feel that shot. Um, but yeah, he's played that well. Big target as well because even if he misses the three, he's got the eight to snooker behind. Yeah, because of the way he played it. Yeah, he kept the eight at, you know, as uh, as the barrier as well. Yeah. So you playing this one rail to get the two into the side rail and then to the bottom rail, or are you just hitting and hoping and trying to get a result? Well, he's gone for a result by the looks of it. He's given that a run. And this is a fairly elementary out here now. I think so. It looks like we're going to be nine all. And, uh, <laughs> I think the uh, four to six requires a little bit of care. But really, it's the three to the four. That three to the four. To make sure he's high on a four. I'd play the four in the corner, to be honest. I know, I, but the, he won't, I can tell you. He'll, come, <laughs> he'll try and find a screw back to get the right angle. And that's uh, the field shots that uh, he's so good at. I, mean, I don't we think he's on the right angle, is he? Yeah, he's good enough. Is he screwing off the side? Oh, no, yeah, he's just yeah, enough. Yeah, just perfect. enough. And, uh, yeah, they're really good nine-ball players. They have such good feel for uh, for screw-back shots like that where you can just control it to a sixpence. Yeah. Uh, where, you know, lesser mortals tend to go too far or be short. Um, the really good players can find that line nicely. True. And so when I'm like you, I'd have been looking for the long, yeah. <laughs> for the stop shot and, uh, and put the uh, four in the other corner. <laughs> but, but he's played this well a little bit. Uh, he's overplayed this one. Yeah, he's but talking he should about be able control screw. Yeah, just a nice little shot here. Just to get to the side cushion. Oh, he's, he, he wants to drive it. Okay. Well, he's That's played fine. it well. He's played it very well. Allows him to pop the eight confidently as well. Yeah, it means you don't have to walk around the table as well. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's always a benefit. Yeah. <laughs> it's always handy when you can just uh, keep bringing the white ball back to where you are and uh, you don't have to move <laughs> around a whole lot. <laughs> Particularly later in the day. Yeah, true. So crucial break coming up here. You know, we're getting to the latter end of the tournament, or latter end of this match, sorry. Um, race to four now. It is a race to four now, and uh, that having to win, winning the lag can be uh, can be critical here. It means that if it gets uh, we get to Hill Hill, then uh, yeah. Jazzy gets the break. He's gotten lucky there because he's got the dry break and uh, got the snooker. So two. Where do you push here? Oh. 
Do you it's push for the jump? I think he's got it because he can't give him any sort of shot at it. Yeah. It's hard to say he's in the camera angle at the moment. Maybe push away from the seven just a little bit so you leave the long jump. Or, yeah, you could leave it where he's looking. Yeah, I like that half ball, yeah, the half ball right hand side of the one makes it a pretty complicated shot then. Yeah, leave the, leave the rail first shot. Yep. Oh, no. I think he's left the one on. I think he's pretty close. And Jazzy yeah. will try and kick this in, even with, you know, if he can't hit it. I think it. he's on it direct. He might be very well. Wow. That's a, that's a mistake by Mikey. Three's still a bit awkward, though. So you need to play a, a good shot to get onto that. Well, that's a good angle, because you could run the two run the two in and go get the white near the right-hand side rail for the three. He's come around to have a look to see where he wants to be. Yeah, if he can get anywhere on that rail, he's got a shot. And uh, and it's pretty natural to hold for the four as well. Yep. Well, he's punching it in, is he? No, he, still, he needs to just stun to the cushion. If he just runs through, it's, it's going to be too close, too far away. But yeah. That's hit oh, it too hard. He's overplayed that. So, we'll see. It actually is deceptive. It might actually still be on. Well, judging by his head shake, it would not be on. Okay. But maybe he can... Oh, it's, it's a, not the easiest safety either. Can you bank the three and hold behind the seven? Tough, no, I think so. If he's going to play the bank shot, he try and put the three right up on the centre cushion at the top end there and okay. get the white somewhere near underneath the nine if he can. I think that's what he's going for. Oh, oh well, he's, he's got, got a result. He's got, he, has <laughs> got, he has got a result. <laughs> and I can say, we talk about the rubs in this game and yeah. uh, they, they can make a difference. And Absolutely. certainly if... Uh, it is actually Jazzy, uh, I think about Jazzy 4-1 uh, <laughs> in the rub department so far. Uh, yeah. And yet the scores are locked even, so it's, True. it's all credit to Mikey to still be there when things haven't really gone that well for him. True. Well, I think he's left the three, the thin edge of the three. But if not, you can just go cushion first, can't he? He can go cushion first or, you know, control jump shot. Uh, he's got a few. He's yeah. got a few options there. I think he, uh, he's the aggressive kind of player. He might go for the three in the middle, on the and knowing that if he misses it, it hits the side rail and goes potentially safe. Yeah, I think uh, he he's lining up. He wants to have a go. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's the way he's going to go. He's going to try and uh, kick this in the middle pocket with the potential of pushing it along, as Sowen said. But I think he's left this, this, is, this is up. Mike, it Mike would be very pleased with this result. Yeah. So do you play two rails for the four in the middle? Well, Mikey likes to play it like that way. Or, or he could play two rails with the four in the corner. True. It's just a matter how he's feeling. It looks like he's going to come upstairs. Yeah, the four in the middle is the way he wants to go. So he, he was feeling that quite nicely. So he's played it nice. A little and bit Chinese. Oh, that's very Chinese, actually. Yeah, but at least but you don't have to do anything with the white here. Not a whole lot. If he just tickles that in, that's probably good enough. Cute it yep. well. Yeah. Such a good cueist. Yes, excellent. Both of these guys are very good over a ball. So you want to make sure you leave a bit of angle here on the six to get back for the seven yeah that's right and that's that's what these guys do it's exaggerated to get better to get too much angle than not enough and this is very controllable now yeah stunned he back wants, to the blue spot i think you go past spot. the blue spot put the seven in the corner yeah yeah he's played it nice perfect that is perfect just a little stun run straight through the middle here Oh, he just stroked it straight in. That's perfect. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Gee, that's amazing. Those, those seem to be the shots where Mikey's lost a little bit of concentration. A couple of yeah. times there with that sort of shot where it just looks so easy, it's, you can't miss it. Yeah. Um, it's just a long day, isn't it? Yeah, and it is just uh, a result of a very long day. This is, uh, yeah. This is Mikey's uh, second favourite nine ball. Yeah, it's the mirror image of the other one. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, 
I can think probably that, almost start seeing the lines like on a snooker table. Oh, no, yeah, very much so. Very <laughs> much so. Well, that was a somewhat of a reprieve for Mikey because, you know, Jasm caught up and broke that two-frame buffer, but now Mikey gets to break once again to establish that two-frame lead again if he can. Absolutely. And we're at the very much, yeah, we're getting near the pointy end now. <laughs> And as much as uh, these guys are very close mates, uh, they would both uh, individually love to win this event. So, Absolutely. Wow. Is that another dry break? That's another dry break, yeah. So either they're not contacting that, that head ball as flush as they'd like to, because yeah. you should always get a wing ball, as you know, Sarwan. Um, with the Magirac, uh, you should always get the... Um, the wing ball, it's the same side as the side you're breaking on. Uh, Is it possible they're getting a little lazy with the racking? I'm not sure it's about the racking or just, just not aligning the break. You know, I think sometimes the Magirac, we take it for granted that you're always going to get one. Yeah. And you're probably not as uh, as focused on hitting that, that head ball as cleanly as, as uh, you should be. True. That was the uh, fairly average safety from, from uh, Jasm there. And that's uh, not the best shot from Mikey either. No. I think he caught that fuller than he wanted to. He wanted to pinch a bit of angle and come well off the cushion. Stun this in, or stun it in and hold no, for the just, three? No, just run but in and out. Oh. Ooh. Has he gotten away with it? <laughs> well, <laughs> actually last time the uh, <laughs> this sort of scenario happened, uh, Jazzy had one quick look to see whether he could plant or, or uh, combo the nine. and said, I yeah, know... I uh, I'd definitely be having a go at the I know, so on. This is one of your favourite <laughs> favorite shots. Especially uh, if you can play it where the two also goes towards the hole. Well, if you pot one, you probably pot the other Yeah. in this scenario because that's sort of the, na the natural split of the balls. Yeah. And you can probably hold for the three too. <laughs> Just to well, you've got all sorts of options. Yeah. yeah. I, Would you have a go here, JP? Or? Well, probably. You yeah, because yeah. it's not a bad chance. Mm. And, and, you, and, and it's a... It's a plant or, or a combo that you can visualise. Yeah. And he, he's definitely having a crack here. Oh. He's missed it, but he's played it in such a way that he gets the two safe. Yeah, it's funny how wide the two went. Usually, uh, if, you have, if you find that line like that, the, uh, they separate both going towards the pocket. Yeah. But, uh, the nine went very close, and the one uh, two balls run away quite, quite narrow. Can he hold behind the four here? Very hard shot. He can cannon into the four like that, but trying to hold it up from that distance is very yeah. hard, particularly when the, the two balls so close to the cushion. True. If, if the two balls even two or three inches off the cushion, then you've got enough room to actually just hold it and, in, and, and the two then can separate and yeah, go on. Yeah, get distance. Get distance, but... Uh, so cushion first knock the two again like he did before and oh jazzy would be looking to pot this this yeah. is the way he, he doesn't think about you know just trying to yeah if there is a good safety escape he would work it out but this is absolutely a scenario where, where uh jasm is going to try and pot this he's probably playing it as a two-way shot where the white maybe st sticks behind the three and he gets a free <laughs> shot at the two yeah he does very much so because i think if he hits it with a little bit of bottom then the white ball will go back towards uh the bottom cushion. No, he's yeah. caught it very full. But he's left the yeah. two on. Yeah. Tad unfortunate, but... Well, it's one of those, if, if he finds the angle he wants, the white ball runs to where he wants to go. But because yeah, he caught it too full, um, the white ball stayed uh, in, in play. And he's left Mikey a pretty good shot here. Oh. oh. I was just thinking that Mikey's missed a few shots into that pocket of that nature. Yeah, and it's just, it's just tiredness. You know, they are getting to stage now. It's been a very, very long day because uh, that's a shot that Mikey never misses. Yeah, true. So screw back onto the blue spot. Oh, a little bit off the side cushion, I think. Yeah, that's the way to play. Give yourself a bit of margin. The straight screw back's yeah. always dangerous. Perfect um, for the two rails. 
Yeah, he's got two rails come around and he put the four back in the left hand side. And if he stays uh, somewhere near straight on it, then, uh, then the rack is very easy. Oh, he's played oh, this he's just perfectly. Perfect. This is, yeah, yeah that's very nice. Just so enough. you're going to play for the 8 9? <laughs> well, probably in the end, that's because of where they are. It's probably worth it because, I mean, if he gets anywhere near straight on that, that's, uh, that's almost impossible to miss. It's either that or try and play on it, but it's probably trickier to play on too. We'll see where he finishes on, this, uh, uh, on the 7, on how he decides you know, to, to proceed. Um, He's pretty good on the 6, so he can probably land almost exactly anywhere he wants. Anywhere he wants, yeah. I think the 8-9 uh, combo uh, is the way a, to go. There's a big chance from here. A bit more distance than you might want. but This is fine, but it's a better angle. And that's what he deliberately played there to get a better angle. It's yep. made it nice. And 10 all. <laughs> 10 all, and we're back on soon. Who needs a race to 13 when you can just have a race to three? A uh, race to three. I did confirm with the guys uh, during the break that they are playing for the uh, for the 500 difference. Um, the winner gets two and a half thousand, and the uh, runner-up gets a thousand. Uh, they've decided to save 500, which means the runner-up will now get two thousand. So uh, the winner gets 500, which is still a significant difference, and enough for them to uh, maintain concentration and try and uh, and try and finish on top. Yeah. I well mean, now, uh, now that it's 10 all, they might have another conversation to save, <laughs> another, save another 250. Oh, yeah, I'm sure <laughs> Sarvan's very smart mathematically, and I'm sure if he was playing, he would be having this conversation right now. <laughs> and, uh, I think the boys have they've, they've set their they've set their number, and they're yeah. going to continue. True. All right, well, the last two breaks have been dry, one from each of them, so... That's, yes, man, very rare, very, very rare, because they've been both been breaking beautifully. Yeah, it'll be uh, interesting to see whether he does anything different on this one, maybe hit it harder, or... I think it's just, it, the, the focus should be just on getting it accurate, not necessarily on pace. Fight, hit, hit that one ball full, That's there a great you go. Break. The wing ball's gone straight in, he's controlled the white ball beautifully. Legal break, and... and the one's in play, so yeah. can't do a whole lot with it, but he doesn't have to. Just a little uh, soft hand screw there to stay on the two ball. And uh, three's up. True. Th three to four. And these, these are uh, a lot more difficult than people realise. With the three ball being where it is. Hard to get it back. It doesn't give you the same manoeuvrability as a ball that's in the open. True. Oh, he's played he's that got nice. through that a lot more than I thought he would. But that's good enough. So would you run through on this to make sure you just get past the four? Or are you I think back? I think Jazzy will because you don't want to stay too close to the cushion here yeah. because you're going to have to do something with that three ball to get to yeah. get away. He's probably going to come through two cushions. You could screw back to the balk line. Oh, and then he's, he's, he's going down yeah. deep. He's going deep. Oh, Ooh. will he go? Oh, no. Yeah, he's played, Actually, that's a good line too. Yeah. That's a very good line. Gives you the natural run. That's the way. That's right. And you're not being hampered by the by the uh, right hand jaw here. You're not. It doesn't come into play at all. He's played that nice. Yeah, he's played that well. Still want to make sure you get reasonably like out for the five because you're going to need. He's got a, a good enough angle to get to punch through the line there and come back out. Okay. Is that the six or the eight? That's the uh, that's the eight ball there. Okay. So, so uh, he's o yeah, he's overrun this, but that's still good enough. It's recoverable. Yeah. Plenty of left-hand side and go once and twice across. Yeah, just once over and then just into the open. Yeah, that's it. So do you play these with bottom left to come towards the eight or right-hand side or bottom hey, left? I think, he, I think you just play a little bit of bottom left here just, just to try and pull it up. Yeah, he's played that nicely. Nice. Nothing tricky. Yeah, don't have to be cute with that. Dead straight. That's the way you want him. All right. 1-0, race to three. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it's a vital frame at this stage of the match. It's a very important frame.
tell you, it's imp it's very important that Mikey wins this one now because he Absolutely. doesn't want he doesn't want to have Jasm hit the hill. Um, yeah, and be two frames behind. And tomorrow. be two frames behind. That means he had to win three straight to come home. So, and it's out of his hands at that point because Jasm could easily break and run. And absolutely, and there haven't been the three frames separation yet. So, um, if that happens, it's going to be very, very tough. Oh, sorry, I got my numbers wrong here. That's fine. Okay. Will he also adjust his break? Yes, perfect Same. break. Oh, White's he's been kicked. White's been kicked. It's unlucky. because the White had stayed where he was, yeah, he, he might have had a better shot. True, but I think the six is obscuring the one anyway, so he... <laughs> Probably enough to cheat cheat that in there, though. Yeah, true. So where what do you do from here? It's very hard because you, don't, you want to make sure that the, if you play the one into the cushion, it's got to miss the six yeah. coming out. Can he play uh, the two rails? So between the three and the eight, and then get the white under the that's, nine? That's the best line, the easiest line to find. It's, oh. Oops. Oh. Well, he's, al <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's <yeah. laughs> almost got under the nine with two two kisses. Yeah. But he's left distance. He's left distance, and, uh, and Jazzy has to play a little bit of check side on this one ball, too, if he wants to stay in, uh, in play with the two. Are you playing it up and down? Off I two think, rails? Yeah, I think yeah. because of the distance, it's very hard to play a controlled side shot over this distance with with uh, with so little weight. Yeah, just it's better off to go right through it. It's good well, confidence that's what he's stroke, but oh, he's, uh, he, oh, he's and he's gone in oh, off as well. He has scratched. He, he potted the scratched. five as well. Went five. In off. Well, either way, no matter what happened, <laughs> then it was going to be a bad result for him because yeah. if he doesn't go in off, he's, he's snookered. Um, but at least with the snooker, you got some chance of getting out of it. But now it's definitely, uh, you could almost uh, bank on uh, on Mikey running this frame. True. Running this uh, this rack, rather. I like this option as well. A lot of people would have put it low and try to go inside the six and the rail. Yeah. I think this is a, a much safer option. And yeah. just screw back now for the three in the middle. Three in the middle, yeah. Cued it nicely. Oh, a little short actually. It is a bit short now. So he might actually have to put the four in the other hot in the other pocket, or he could double. Oh no, actually the scepter. Oh. No, these played that. I thought he should, he was better off to play to the, side. the side he was going where he is now. Yeah. In w one cushion, where he tried to hold that, I reckon, and I don't think that was that was holdable. Now it's a snooker. Well, it's a good snooker. It's not as deep as I. It's hard to tell here. Can probably he get, not as. Yeah. It's not as deep as he wanted it, but yeah. uh, it's still probably good enough to mean he, uh, to get him another visit. True. But yeah, he'd be unhappy with that because he did get a, a really uh, a golden opportunity there. Yeah, with uh, ball in hand at this level, he probably expects to clear up most times. And I keep mentioning fatigue, but I have to because it's it's so relevant at this stage of the day. These guys have been playing full concentration for three days in a row yeah. and uh, anyone who uh, who plays uh, any form of competition understands the difficulty the mental uh, challenge and strain it it takes to uh, to maintain that sort of concentration for a long time especially when every day is over 12 hours correct well he's left it on and uh He's it's probably a fortunate. little straight. Yeah. But, I mean, I think Mikey's going to still be pretty happy with it. Yeah, it's just a matter of Mikey's just thinking, how far do I go? Do I scroll straight back? Or somewhere, yeah. somewhere, near, somewhere near the blue spot's the right spot from here. Yeah. Oh, he's played that really nice. Oh, he's got into it perfectly. Maybe top left here? Mikey likes that shot, but I think he actually goes the other way. Just because it's getting late in the day now, you just want to keep things as simple as possible. Yeah. Yeah, and that's exactly what he's done. And it's a smart way to play. I mean, we can all be a little bit flowery when we're feeling good and everything's running our way, but this yeah. is this is the real 
the tough end of a tournament and he just wants to get things right. Yeah. That's a nice shot. And That's, yeah, as simple as possible. Another concession there. So 11 all. <laughs> <It's a laughs> Race to two. Because uh, a best of three for a uh, $500 difference. Well, no matter what happens, they've uh, both put on a very good tournament, both in the doubles and the singles. And uh, both both players have been playing great the entire time. They've played some great shots and helped each other through the doubles as well. You know, sometimes when one of them gets a bit out of shape, the other guy plays a perfect shot to get them back. So the recovery shot, and that's yeah. right. And uh, certainly there's... Uh, it's a credit to both of them to be able to uh, have won the, the doubles event and both be playing each other in the final <laughs> of, the, of the singles. And, yeah. And, yeah, to be fair, they've been the two best players here all week. Absolutely. Um, there's, uh, there's been some quality players uh, from South Australia and from interstate in this event. And uh, there was a, uh, a ranked... Uh, oh, that's a, a great break. Dutch player here. Um, <laughs> How about this for a break? Wow. You could not ask for a better split. I, I was just <laughs> trying to think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How, how do I? I've got a dead straight three to a four in the corner. Six is open. Six seven. Yeah, that's just, this is pretty as probably yeah. good as you could ever ask for. It just knocks the one and the two in off the break. Just everything yeah. sits pretty. You've just got to make sure you get far far enough across. Get, yeah, six. far enough across so you're relatively straight on the six. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Elementary error. That is very much so. I can think he can't pot this. And He's only got the edge of it now. Yeah. He certainly can't pot it. So, uh, Jazzy, Jazzy be kicking himself because I yeah. mean, you beg for opportunities like this in any frame, let alone in, you know, in this scenario, the the yeah you know, the the final of a big event. Absolutely. And uh, you get a break like that, and then you, uh, two shots later, you snookered yourself. And you or, had or, such or, a big margin for error there. You could have gone yep. all the way to the side rail yep. and still have a shot. He hasn't stuked himself, but he's very much off angle now. And how he, what he does here, it looks like he's going to try and drop kick it. Well, he's jagged it. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> I, th I thought he had jagged that. <laughs> I thought, Jesus, the way, the way things have been going for Jazzy it wouldn't have surprised <laughs> me at all. Uh, but uh, yeah. Yeah, here we are. Now, this is not a luxury for Mike either. This is no, a this is tough. This is one of those cut shots. So you're five nil up, playing someone race to six. That you just stroke this one in beautifully. Yeah. But uh, it's quite a nice. Yeah, at the pointy end of a tournament, all of a sudden it's not so easy, and uh, he's played that beautifully. Now he's just got to pick a line for himself here. Where does he want to put it? Well, yeah. Either way, you just got to make up your mind. I like two rails for the eight in the top left corner. But no. he's, uh, well, I don't know what he's played for there. But well, he's, he's stunned he's in and out for the centre and he's got the corner nicely. So yeah. either, either way, it's probably the, he had, a, he had a bit of each way on that one. Yeah. And and got a really good result. He stayed yeah. down on that he shot. He stayed down, watched <laughs> that all the way in the hole. It was good <laughs> to it, see. He's missed a couple of those. Yeah. You know, that, uh, by just being very loose. But he certainly kept his head down all the way through that one. And he's, uh, he's really good at you know, oh, maintaining wow. his composure and, and, and keeping his mental strength at that time. He's hit the front with his break. So uh, well, I tell you chance. what, another, uh, this, is, this is definitely uh, it's a, nine, a on score, the, yeah. nine on the snap? Or? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen too many golden breaks with the... Uh, magic rack. With the magic rack, but there was one... Uh, Actually, Justin Chris, did against Jason Chris, Ahmed. Chris Lomax got one against me the other day in the qualifying. Um, yeah, Chris Kovacs, I think. Oh, Kovacs, sorry, yes. Yeah. I know uh, Justin was playing, uh, Justin Sage was playing Jason Ahmed, and uh, Justin was on the hill and got the nine on the snap. Well, so, uh, it can be done. Yeah. <laughs> well, ball down. On the one, I think, yes, on the yep. one, and legal break. But the five's yep. a bit tricky. Yeah, certainly got to be looking at uh, trying to get the, get on the four so he can get under the five in the corner. Yeah. 
It definitely goes in the corner, but it li yeah, it's limited options. But these guys will be able to find a way. I think the real key shot here is making sure you land on the two. Don't snook yourself. Don't go behind the nine. He's got plenty of room there. There's a big margin from the side cushion here. Look there. He's played that perfectly. He's opened up the margin yeah, nice. by getting right in the spot that's coming back towards the two. So, I think he gets this. I think he does too. Particularly after he... Uh, he showed us how, how much he had, he's got, had his head down over that last uh, very Absolutely. simple eight ball. Um, he made sure. He said, I've been a bit loose with these shots. I need to focus. I think that's one thing that's really good about his game. He can, he can take his time and, and compose himself. Yep. You know, he, rather than rushing. I know now, he's, not, he's not thrilled about that shot. Just, no, no. He th I think he wanted to stay the other side of it so he could screw back to the back of this top rail. Yeah. Um, now he's probably got to run through it and try and find the result. Yeah. I think you can still screw off the side rail. Oh, the five actually goes. Yeah. It doesn't look like it goes from the camera angle here, but yeah, the way he's played that, that five definitely goes. All right. So you can probably just screw back a tiny bit for the six. You just and then want play to. The six you just want to stop shot so you separate it from the black, and that's enough. Oh no, he had enough angle to come oh, away. Nice. Wow. Because I had no idea that five went there. It was tough. It, I didn't, it didn't I look like it on the, cam, on the camera angle. It looked like the five only went in the bottom corner. So this, this makes us out now a whole lot easier. Well, one key shot here. One stroke here. Yeah. Stay down. Play the nine in the same hole. No, I think... Oh, he could do. Depends on what how he's feeling. He could play both ways. Yeah, he's decided to get right through that. And it, Oh, and oh, can see. Can see well, done. well done, well done, Jazzy. Well done, gentlemen. There was a fantastic final, oh. and awesome a great match. effort by these two guys. Well, what, what a weekend they've had. They've taken all the trophies, all the money. Um, <laughs> <I'm> not... <laughs> nine. Hang on. We're gonna... Oh, he's oh. missed the nine. Oh, he's it's, it's, it. a, it's a rematch. He's played yeah. safe. <laughs> all right. Thanks for joining us, guys. Th thanks for joining us, and uh, yeah. Well done. Thank you uh, to Empire Pool Hall, all the staff. Uh, Alec and the team have done a brilliant job here again. And, of course, to Q Sports, um, certainly Damo. Damo here has uh, been responsible for setting it up for, uh, for you to be able to view all this. So, yeah, it's been absolutely brilliant. So, who's, who's uh, is this? Damo, this is all your setup? Thank you very much. Okay, yeah, so we've had everyone chip in here, and I, I must admit uh, this isn't, hasn't been done by Q-Ball TV, but Q-Ball always deserves as much credit as they can get because they've been brilliant for, uh, for streaming uh, pool from all around the country. But uh, Damo, thank you very much. Um, Damo's the manager here at Empire, and uh, he's uh, put the time in with the help of a few of the other boys here. I know Guy Moriarty had some, uh, some input. But thank you to all those people that uh, contributed with uh, some commentary. Good night and good luck.